So, hi, uh, my name is Doug O'Rourke. Yes? Yeah? Yeah, it is Doug O'Rourke. And I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about math education and social justice. But before I do, I want to start a little preface with a story. And it's a story about my own professional growth. A big part of my identity is for 17 years, I was a Chicago public school teacher. I taught in every kind of Chicago public school. I started a charter school, I worked in a neighborhood school, I worked in a magnet school, I even spent a year in a private school before I started graduate school. Once a CPS principal called me in her office on Friday to say I'd be working at a different school on Monday, so I've had the full CPS experience. <laughs> at the same time, like you, I'm a member of MMC, ICTM, NCTM, I've ran a math league, I've written math contest con questions, you know. I like CAS, I like Sketchpad, uh, I like George Polio a lot. So a big part of my identity is that as well. But now I direct a teacher training program at the University of Chicago. I'm training, training, sorry Steve, you screwed this part up for me, math and science <laughs> teachers to teach in Chicago public schools. But I started this way just to say that my heart is still, I'm a high school math teacher. Okay? There are three things I want to talk about for uh, when it concerns math and, and, and uh, social justice. What I'm more unsure about, what I'm less unsure about, and then I'm going to make a few suggestions. Okay? Uh, the more unsure part. You know, the first thing that came in my mind when I thought about giving this talk was, you know, coming into math class with some data about poverty or about, say, the environment. But at the same time, it, it, you know, it concerns me a little bit that, um, you know, I'm someone who believes that math itself is empowering. And I don't know that we're the people to bring this into a math classroom, right? Um, you know, it feels heavy-handed to bring politics into our classes, and I'm worried about delivering that. You know. Of course, uh, you know, at the same time, it also bothers me that I'm going to bring in some sort of hidden curriculum. I, I thought it was kind of cute, this clip to look inside the hidden curriculum. Um, but anyway, you know, so if I bring this kind of social justice into math that way in an overt way, you know, am I trying to fool my students into, into believing what I believe? Okay, but there are things where I feel less unsure. I do have some strongly held beliefs that I want to share with you. And so, you know, places where I think we as math educators can contribute to the social justice in our society. So I'm going to start with a national issue, and then I'm going to come to your classrooms. You know, the biggest political issue that we face as teachers is the oncoming advent of national standards. Um, high stakes tests. This, this report will tell you that the more you review for high stakes tests, the less math kids will learn. What I'm worried about is that right now, I'm going to conferences and people are really excited about the standards for mathematical practice. But I'm worried that it's going to be outweighed by the standards for mathematical content. And what that's going to mean is the kids that are behind, that's all they're going to get. Okay? Second thing I want to talk about where I'm, actually this should be more unsure, not less. But anyway, is that I want to go back to my own classroom experience. I think for me, I focused a lot on my own development, my kids, my math team. Everything else was sort of a distant third. In turn, what we say about a lot of teachers, they live in an egg crate, right? It's rigid. They're surrounded by other teachers with other eggs in the egg crate, and they don't really interact with them. Okay? I know I had the occasional student teacher. Actually, Isaac Greenspan was one of them. right? But I never worked at being a mentor. Let's think about what we do with first-year teachers. Who teaches Algebra one in our schools? And who teaches Calculus? Right? Um, you know, the experienced teachers usually get the choice. OK, so I've said, I've, I've said some things that I'm concerned about. That egg crate that we live in, the national oncoming standards. So I want to make a few suggestions. I want to mention a book called The Teaching Gap. It recommends, actually, that we should have national standards. Okay? Those common standards allow for the development of a collaborative teaching culture that I'd like to see, things like lesson study. The flip side of this, though, of course, is they're, they're tied to high-stakes tests. And while, you know, for the, for the time being, I hope that the standards for mathematical practice get, get emphasized, I think at some point we may have to come back and fight them. We need to do less with curriculum that doesn't matter. We need to offer authentic performance tests where kids have the opportunity to bring data from their own lives into the classroom. That's my solution, too. I'm not going to bring the politics in, but I'm going to leave space for my kids to do it through the applications we do. I have a question, okay? Ninth graders, you know what corresponds to, the, the, to them, the greatest likelihood that they're being admitted to college? Their ninth grade grades. Go back to Algebra 1. Maybe it's time to stop saying who's qualified to teach calculus and say who's qualified to teach Algebra 1, okay? It's time for me to start, time for all of us to stop being just a cooperating teacher, but being a clinical instructor. Someone that learns how to be a great mentor to new teachers and works at it. So those of us that are experienced are the best teachers here. That needs to be part of our job. Okay? So, in summary, okay, fight for collaboration, 
Let your kids make the math in your class relevant. Teach algebra one and learn how to be a great mentor. Maybe I'm maybe there's less maybe, maybe I'm more sure. Thank you.